guys, it's Jessie V. And in today's video, we're talking about a very, very strange tradition from the Victorian era. It was where if you loved someone, you would give them a necklace or a jewelry piece with your eye inside of it. This eye would be painted, sketched, it could be a photograph. As you can see, I'm currently wearing one. I was so inspired by the topic of today's video that I decided to make a bunch of them myself. I love making handmade jewelry and this was such a cool idea. So yeah, I made eye necklaces in a bunch of different styles and I just think they're so cool. I love them. I have an Etsy link down below if you guys would like one that I made. I only made a very small amount. But before I get into the history of lover's eye jewelry, I just wanted to talk about something for just a moment. I have noticed lately that sometimes I get comments like, Jesse, I love you so much and I love your videos, but I hate the fact that you do self promotions a lot or Jesse, like, I love you, but the promotions in your videos are so annoying. And like, I get that. And I'm always open to feedback as long as it's respectful, like everyone can have an opinion and that's totally fine. But I just want to talk about, you know, the promotions that I do very frequently in my videos. When you watch my videos, you only see me because I am the face of my channel. I'm the face of Jessie V. And you don't see the huge team of people that I have behind me. When you guys purchase something from my website or one of my handmade jewelry pieces or maybe you download one of the apps that I have that goes towards supporting my business as a whole I have a management team I have people who work in our warehouse I have people who work in our physical storefront we have a Yana coordinator we have a Yana program which needs so much funding and support a lot of our proceeds also go towards a Lyme disease foundation called the G Magnata foundation so we're partnered with a lot of people that we give a portion of our revenue you too. So when people call it like self promotions, it's not like I'm taking all of it. There's a huge team that is Jessie V and there are so many amazing things that we want to do and make amazing changes in the world with the Lyme Disease Foundation and with the Yana program. And I'm also just super passionate about the storefront that we have because it's moved from being just merch with Jessie V's name on it to being actual products and different brands that we collaborate with. And I'm just like super passionate and every time you guys go and support me in that way, it allows me to keep going. It allows me to keep making videos and keep Jesse V a thing. So I never do self promotions for selfish reasons. It's because there are so many people behind me to support and Jesse V is such a bigger thing than what you guys just see in front of you. So I hope that makes sense. I don't want to ever make anyone feel bad for commenting stuff like that. I just would like to explain myself every once in a while. You know, this is my job. This is how I make a living and there's just so much more to that than what you guys see. So yeah, hope that explains why in most of my videos I'm very excitingly telling you guys about new products and new ventures and new projects I'm doing. I'm just excited and I'm excited that these things that I'm doing allows me to keep having a Jesse V channel and business in general. Okay, Anyways, let's talk about Lover's Eye Jewelry. For centuries, Lover's Eye Jewelry was a romantic yet eerie tradition. It all began back in 1785 when a woman named Maria Ann Fitzherbert received a very unusual jewel from her lover. Now her lover was Prince George of Wales and he had commissioned a miniature painting of his eye to give to her to keep. And this was the first time this had ever been done. Now for reasons I don't have a ton of time to get into, to right now, they were not allowed to be married, so they couldn't be together even though they loved each other so much. So Maria was so happy to have this little painting of his eye with her all the time, and so she ended up giving George a painting of her own eye for him to keep. So they like swapped eye paintings. She gave him a painting of her own eye encased in a locket for him to gaze at and to watch over him in the life they were forced to live apart. It's actually a really sad story, and after this, this lover's eye jewelry became very, very popular. They were compelling pieces of wearable art that suggested an intimate relationship between two people since the identity of the loved one is not revealed. So a lot of women, when they had a secret lover or maybe they had a boyfriend they hadn't told their friends or family about yet, they would wear their eye on a necklace and so people wouldn't know who it was they were dating. Like people could look at the eye on a woman's necklace and start to guess, like is it Billy? Is it Tom? 
Tommy is a Jeremy, and the person doesn't have to tell because only they know, which I think is kind of cool. And the whole idea is that the person you love is always watching you, which can definitely sound a little creepy, but I also can see how that's maybe romantic as well. Like your boyfriend or girlfriend is always with you, even though they're not physically there. And although the eyes were traditionally worn by lovers, over the years that changed and mothers began buying them for daughters or daughters for mothers or sisters and close friends for each other, it began to just represent someone you loved in general. It didn't have to be romantic, whether that was a friend or family or your lover. Most lovers' eyes are painted on ivory or vellum, set in yellow gold pins, pendants, or lockets, and surrounded by pearls, diamonds, or semi-precious stones. I mean, these could get very elaborate, and they were very, very beautiful. The lockets also have hinged glass compartments in the back that open to hold a lock of hair. So not only would you sometimes have the eye of someone you loved, but you can take pieces of their hair and put it in the jewelry as well. It had like a little pocket. Don't worry, the ones that I made do not have a hair pocket. <laughs> These vintage necklaces are still being sold to people today, even though the buyer doesn't know who the eye belongs to. So people have found like vintage versions of these necklaces and are just like reselling them, buying them. So you could have like Billy's eye from 1802. The ones I made are from scratch. There's a quote about these necklaces that I found interesting. It says, we feel this gaze resting upon us. We feel this connection with this subject that you have never met. You have the feeling that you know this person just a little bit. So yeah, that's all about the lover's eye jewelry. I'm so fascinated by this. And there are so many different love trinkets from the Victorian era that are bizarre, but interesting. So if you wanna see more about that, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. But I just wanted to briefly talk about the ones that I made because I thought the process was really cool. So I made these from scratch. So they came with the necklace plate. I bought the glass for over top of it. And I actually went online and found these really cool royalty-free portrait paintings from back in the 1700s, 1800s. And I zoomed up, I printed them out, and I only cut out the eye portion of them. I glued it into the necklace, put the glass on top, and then I added the chain. And I just think it looks so cool because all of them are so unique and different. So I'll show you up close. But I'm wearing this woman's eye from the 1800s. But I also have this man's eye that I made. He has a blue eye. And then there's another woman's eye right here. This one's in gold. So yeah, if you guys are interested in getting one of the ones that I made, I have linked it down below. You can choose it based on if maybe you see an eye that looks like your boyfriend or girlfriend or maybe your mom or dad or sibling or best friend. Or you can just pick one that you like the most. It doesn't even have to represent someone that you know. It's just kind of cool to wear. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope you didn't mind my little speech at the start. I feel like sometimes it's cool for me to just like connect one-on-one -on -one with you guys and just like talk about stuff that I'm feeling. But anyways, I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Hey guys, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I launched my world this week. It's been so awesome seeing all of your amazing responses to it. I took some clips of people wearing their Coraline eyes and their Coraline sweaters. You guys looked so good. I was so excited to see all of you wearing those exclusive wearables. And I am so excited to get more people into the world. We're slowly gonna be rolling it out to more and more. So make sure you're signed up to the waitlist. I've put the link down below in the description and I will see you in the world very, very soon.